thank you thank you i've got recording going so so we have in the quiz we are looking at the angle of various systems so i want to try and see if we can use this k into the displacement of angle to see whether we can explore strain energy um, in cyclopropane or, or cyclobutane so let me uh, uh, see if I can uh, get to another screen quickly uh, I'm going to just hang on a moment uh, there we go right okay so on are you connected please look for the quiz um, and the first question of a quiz is on cyclopropane so uh, cyclopropane looks like this um, so so if i can draw it like that um, and you'll notice that it should be uh, an equilateral triangle and uh, this angle here for example should be exactly 60 degrees okay so um, these angles here are between a carbon and a carbon and a carbon um, I'm not interested in the hydrogen angles. Let's assume that all angles involving hydrogen are beautifully relaxed and they're at the lowest possible energy they can have. So the question is, can we estimate the strain in cyclopropane? Well, what we need to know for cyclopropane is that cyclopropane, uh, the energy based on theta uh, just excuse this writing, is k k into uh, theta minus theta naught all squared. Okay, and so we need to know what that k value is. Unfortunately, um, I have, uh, um, this is not drawing so nicely, but on the, on the system, I have got the force constant of K, uh, just hang on, uh, just um, give me a moment. I'm not used to working with this tablet. So we've got the K, um, uh, K is, oh dear, uh, this drawing is not coming out, um, uh, my apologies. Uh, the K that we have is 334.72. So this is not going to work really nicely. Um, I need to fix my tablet and get it to draw nicely. But um, you can see that in all of these, we've got the number. We're given the number 334.72 to put into K. We can put 334 into there. We know the exact theta that we've got, which is 60 degrees. And of course, we know the theta that it should be, which is 109.5 degrees. And so you can calculate the energy for a single bond. So you can calculate the energy at this corner. You can calculate the energy at this corner. And you can calculate the energy at this corner. And then, of course, your E bend term is the sum of those three energies. You have all the information you need. There's one slight problem is in the theta minus theta naught squared, you're going to have to convert those two degrees to radians because you'll see that the K has radians unit. So please attempt that. Please, um, I see there's one unfinished attempt on that, but you all need to do that so that I know that you know how to calculate the E theta term. Now let me go back to the, to the slides uh, um, and share. So please, can you do that? Make it a point that by tomorrow um, you have done that task on Are You Connected? And that if you struggle with the task, you have contacted me uh, in the process uh, to just make sure that you understand. It's all application. In cyclopropane, there are three angles and three terms of E, e theta that you have to calculate. But the uh, theta is the same for all of them. So you can multiply your final answer by three instead of calculating individually for each angle. Please attempt that question. 
um, you have all the information you need to do that. Okay, are there any questions? So, okay. Prof, did you say we could multiply our answer by three instead of having to calculate for each of? Because the... all the angles are identical in cyclopropane, each angle is sixty degrees. So you don't need yeah. to calculate it individually for each each. You just calculate it for one, and multiply it by three. Okay. Okay. And similarly, if you get into cyclobutane, where the angles are on 90 degrees, then, of course, you can calculate the uh, energy due to uh, one angle. And then to calculate your E-bend term, you'll, you'll have four, four times that. Okay. okay right. Thank you. So that's um, how we can estimate the energy of a molecule. And what's nice about this E term that we've got here is if we can do calculations on paper in 10 minutes or so, you can imagine how fast a computer can do it. So you can really deal with very large systems. The computer automates the handling of it. The computer can calculate everything. And so you can deal with really large systems if you build up your energy in that term. Uh, it, it may feel like this is a very rough and ready way to calculate energies, but it works really well and it's extremely powerful because um, the types of calculation with molecular mechanics, the types of calculation we can do is, are things like a single point calculation. We've done that already with water. With water, we had a geometry of water and we calculated the the stretch term from both of those bonds. We calculated the angle from uh, its non-ideal angle, and we were able to get a total energy out of it. So that was a single point calculation. But of course, you don't have to just do that. You can also do a geometry optimization. A geometry optimization is where you take uh, the bonds and the angles and the torsions, and you try and change them to get the energy to a minimum. Um, you might sometimes want to scan the potential energy surface to see how the potential energy surface changes as you rotate things, like with ethane, to see the uh, maxima and the minima as you, as you perform a, a rotation. And this may help with conformational searching, which we'll get into. Uh, conformational searching uh, is all about... Um, uh, finding the optimum geometry of a molecule, uh, which might not be possible from a geometry optimization, and we'll deal with that in a moment. Uh, we can also do molecular dynamics simulations. Molecular dynamics um, tries to make the simulation more real by putting everything at a temperature. And things have a temperature because the atoms inside them are moving. And so if you give uh, atoms in a molecule some kinetic energy, if you model that they have a velocity, for example, then of course the bonds will exert a force on the atom and they will accelerate in different ways. And so you will have a random motion um, as you look at it and you'll see um, all the atoms in a molecule in motion during molecular dynamics. And vibrational analysis is something I'd like to get to today. Uh, that's uh, an, another technique that you can do. But of course, if you want to look at a uh, promotion of electrons from one orbital to another, you'll notice that on our energy terms, we've said nothing about electrons. So we cannot do any of those types of calculations with molecular mechanics. We can't calculate NMR. We cannot calculate um, UV vis spec spectra using molecular mechanics. Okay, but we can do a lot, a lot else. Okay. So a single point calculation, we've done that already. You calculate all the terms to give an energy for the confirmation of interest. And you don't change a molecule at all. Um, so we had a, a really non-ideal geometry for water. And we were able to calculate the bend, the bend term and the stretch term. And we, we, we found a total energy. My value here, I think, is not right. Please go back to previous slides to see what the correct value is. 
So that's a single point calculation. Right, something else we can do is a geometry optimization. And that typically involves several single point calculations where you change everything in order to get a geometry with the minimum energy. And this is also, this is very useful to us because um, whether you are constructing a molecule using Cartesian coordinates or a Z matrix or simply using your mouse to uh, generate a molecule, it's quite likely that you have not drawn it perfectly. And so what you will want to do is you want to take that molecule, which has not been drawn perfectly and has therefore a high energy, and you'll want to change it so that you end up getting uh, the lowest possible energy. So geometry optimization is a very useful technique. Uh, that we have a geometry optimization available to us means that we don't have to worry too much if you draw your molecule looking like this, for example, to start with. You can always fix it uh, using a geometry optimization. Right, something we can do as well is a potential energy surface. You can change a bond length, angle of torsion, and if you plot the energy as you make that change, you end up with a potential energy surface. We've already looked at potential energy surfaces. We used a potential energy surface to try and get a cosine energy function. But of course, ultimately what you can do in molecules is you can make the change in angles and calculate the energy to see what the, uh, what the potential energy surface looks like. Please note that if you have a potential energy surface, that uh, if you've got a dip in the potential energy surface, that dip is a minimum, it's a minima, uh, it's, a, it's a minima, a minimum, sorry. Um, and you may have several minima on that potential energy surface. Okay, and of course, uh, maxima uh, on that potential energy surface normally correspond to transition states. Um, Transition states I'm using very loosely. They're at saddle points. Uh, transition states is a high energy connecting to minima. And a transition state may be due to a reaction where you break bonds, or you could have a transition state involved with a conformational change. So you can see that um, you, in going from one minimum to another, there's a, an activation that's required. You have to go through a, a, a maximum energy in order to get to the next uh, conformation that you have. So this here, this line that we see here, this energy graph that we see here is a potential energy surface. Now, this is only if we change a torsion. You don't have to only change a torsion. You can change a bond, you could change a torsion, you could change an angle. And if you change multiple variables at once, uh, then your potential energy surface might look something like this. So here we have uh, what a potential energy surface might look like in general. And I just want you to think that if you were to drop a marble onto this, where would the marble go? Well, it depends where you start off. But I hope you can see that uh, if you drop a ball or a marble, it will end up settling in this area over here or it might end up settling in this area on that uh, at the far left, or at the far right, it might settle, uh, it might go off the edge over here. So those three areas are minima on the uh, two-dimensional potential energy surface. Of course, um, they might be a reactant, and that might be a product, this might be a product as well, and so as you go over the hill in energy to get from one minima to another, you go through a saddle point. You can see it's like a valley between the hills that you go over, and that saddle point uh, corresponds to a transition state. And of course, there is a transition state going over here, a transition state. So uh, on this graph, there are really uh, five important places these three minima that you see here, this lowest one over here, and slightly higher ones over there, and these two transition states are really important. I'm not interested in these maxima over here. I'm interested in the pathways you would take, um, of pathways of least energy that you would need to go from one minima to another. Okay. 
Right. So properties of molecule depends on its 3D um, arrangement. Prof, yes. just just a question. Yes. Um, with with regards to the minima, do you is it just as a result of rotation, or are there other reasons that you could have a minima? Uh, so, uh, it's a minima is just really as a result of the position of the atoms. So if you have a look over here, you can see that as you rotate, these minima are a consequence of the position of the atoms. So over here on this graph, we might have two torsions over here. We might have uh, one torsion in a molecule that has lots of torsions, and we might change the two to see how uh, the combination varies the energy surface. And then, of course, the, the surface will be a little more complex, and you will end up with wells. Uh, rather than a one-dimensional minimum, you'll have a, a minimum in two dimensions. And then, of course, you're, you're, uh, to get from one to the other, you will take uh, the easiest path, which is through a transition state. Does that make it clearer? Yes, thank you. Okay. So, um, in general, uh, we can maybe represent a potential energy surface as looking like this. You'll see that there are several minima on this. So if you were to have a structure that had an energy and a geometry corresponding to this point, and you were to minimize it, it would go, it would lower the energy and it would become stuck in this local minimum over here. Similarly, if you had a, a compound, a, a geometry at this point, and you were to minimize it, it would get stuck in this local minimum here. And of course, if you were fortunate to have a compound that maybe had this energy over here, lowering the energy takes it to the lowest possible minimum, which I will term the global minimum. So that's a problem with um, optimizing uh, molecules is that optimizing a molecule might take you to the closest minimum, but not to the the best the the best minimum that you could possibly have for a molecule so you might want to change torsion angles you might want to change uh, bonds etc in a systematic way or otherwise to try and get to to try and explore all options uh, to twist the molecule in every possible way and then record the energies of all of that twisting to try and find what the global minimum is uh, the global minimum uh, is, is probably a true reflection of the experimental geometry uh, that you will, you will find in bulk um, in the lab. Okay, so that's what a potential energy surface is. Now, a conformational search uh, is something that will help us find the global minimum. So have a look at this molecule here. This is hexane over here that I've got over here, and what's happened is I've drawn it in a really horrible way, and if I were to optimize it, do a geometry optimization, it will still be something that looks roughly this geometry. If you have the PowerPoint version of my slides, please have a look at it and go into presentation mode, because this is an animation. And this shows that uh, you can rotate around these three torsion angles, and it shows all possible uh, orientations of rotating around those three. So it's a three-dimensional potential energy surface that's built up. And of course, energy is being recorded as you change each one of these torsion angles. The energy changes. And if you have a look at the total energy for all of us, um, you can find the conformation that has the lowest energy. And we find that when we do this, the conformation with the lowest energy is the global minimum, which looks like this. And you can see that you can undo uh, a lot of problems through a conformational search uh, to find a global minimum. And this here is, you can see that all bonds are staggered in this. Um, there's no, um, uh, there are no eclipse bonds. Um, um, just hang on a moment. Uh, there are no eclipse bonds, and so this is the lowest energy of, of hexane. Okay. 
So what we can do is we can change all torsions in a systematic manner. What I did to generate this is I chose as six positions of this bond and six positions of rotation about this bond and six positions of rotation around this bond. And so I've, this is a sum of 216 frames and of course 216 energy evaluations. And of course only one of those 216 has the lowest energy and that's the global minimal. Okay. Please be aware that if you've got a, a large molecule and you want to do a systematic search uh, over com for confirmation in this manner, it might not be possible. So uh, an example is with Ritonova, which is a, an anti-HIV drug. It attacks one of the enzymes of HIV. Um, uh, when I have a look at it, I note that there are 18 possible rotations that you can have in it. You can't rotate if, if a bond is stuck in a ring, but there are 18 possible rotations, depending, of course, whether you include amide bonds or not. There are 18 torsions and six positions each. And so you would have to do, if you wanted to evaluate all possible conformations by rotating about bonds, you would have one times 10 to the 14 evaluations. And I don't have enough computing power to do that um, in, uh, in a decade. And you can imagine if you were to able to do a thousand a second, uh, this would be an impossible task on any computer that's available today. So finding the global minimum can be a problem. Okay, so we can change these torsions to find a global minimum, but sometimes it's not feasible. Sometimes we have to go on a more random approach. Sometimes we can use molecular dynamics to help us find because if you're in a, a, a local minimum, and if you give it some energy, if you give the molecule some temperature, all the atoms have kinetic energy and all the atoms have energy to get out of local minima and hopefully get to the global minima. Okay, again on the presentation, if you have the PowerPoint version and you go into presentation mode, uh, you'll see a, 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 an animation of molecular dynamics you'll see this molecule, all these atoms are seemingly moving around randomly. And it's a simulation of this particular molecule at temperature. So all the atoms have kinetic energy and they are moving in, in seemingly random directions um, uh, as the simulation progresses. And so what we can simulate is we can simulate that a molecule has temperature. And to simulate a molecule as temperature, we might be stuck in a local minimum. So you heat it up, so it has high temperature. And of course, a molecule at temperature is not bound by these heights that are preventing it going to the global minimum. And so it's well above the potential energy surface and it heats. And all you have to do is sample at times during the dynamics. You take out a snapshot and you optimize it. So if you take that snapshot, you optimize it, you'll get to another local minimum, which is no good. If you, if you take a snapshot too soon, and you optimize it, you'll get back to this local minimum. But if you let it run long enough, uh, you might find a snapshot of molecular dynamics that when you optimize and you reduce energy, alter the bonds, it gets you to the global minimum. So molecular dynamics is a bit of work. You have to simulate a molecule at temperature. You have to take snapshots and do lots and lots of optimizing. But of course, when you optimize, you'll find that uh, you, you can get a lower energy than perhaps what you had before. And if you're lucky, that is the global minimum. Okay. And then, of course, uh, vibrational analysis is an interesting task. Now, I might run out of time on this meeting, but I would like to try and show you how we can do what a vibrational analysis is. And maybe if we can... Uh, do that. Let's see. Uh, maybe it'll show you kind of what I want you to do in the prac as well. So if you go to calcium.ru.ac.za, please use HTTPS. I don't have redirects for normal uh, web traffic on. Um, if I get time, I'll put them. But for now, put HTTPS on calcium.ru.ac.za. And please, of all of these, please use WebMo Pro. 
Uh, we have WebMo Pro for about another two months. And so please, can we use it while we can? So when you go to WebMo Pro, um, I've already, um, in the prac, I've explained uh, how you need to uh, log in. So the password I've given to you previously, if you need that password, I'll email it to you. Um, but of course, um, if you are 19, if your student number is 19M3456, uh, you would type your username exactly like this uh, without the leading G. And then of course the password I can give to you as well. Um, uh, my username is slightly different. Um, so I'm going to log in uh, like this. Okay, so <clears throat> when you log in, you'll see something that looks like this. And um, it's very straightforward to get a, a job running. So to, to do a calculation, all you have to do is go to this new job tab over here. If you're on computer, um, of course, um, on, on if you're using a cell phone app, you can simply just draw the molecule in directly as you have there. If you're using a cell phone, uh, please uh, look at my instructions for the prac because uh, those are detailed in terms of what you need to do with the cell phone. Okay, but in any case, what you have is you'll start off with a building tool and I want to uh, draw psychopentanone. So I'll start by just clicking in the window or tapping the window to create a carbon atom. And then I can click and drag to make cyclopentane. Um, and you can see I haven't drawn it perfectly. That doesn't matter at all. And then of course we want to carbonyl it here. And so I click and drag to make the, what's going to become the oxygen and click and drag again to make it a double bond. But of course we need to then change this to an oxygen atom so that we've got um, cyclopentanone. So go then to the periodic table and choose an oxygen atom and then you can change it to, and there we have a cyclopentanone. Well, it's not ready yet. We have to do a, a, a kind of a geometry optimization in order to proceed. And so you'll see there's a brush here. It's a fantastic brush. You uh, click it and it cleans up your molecule for you. And now uh, you can use rotate tool to have a look at it if you really want to. And there is your molecule good to go. Now to do a calculation, uh, what you do is you go onto this arrow onto the next or just check the um, things. You don't have to, uh, you can continue, just go okay, don't worry about things. And please can I ask you, uh, where possible to use Orca, um, there are some scans where I would like you to use MOPAC and there's some NMR calcul calculations where you can use Gaussian. These programs um, are separate programs, they're not WebMo. WebMo simply constructs the molecule and sends it to programs that do the calculation for, uh, for us. Now, unfortunately, these programs aren't doing molecular mechanics behind uh, the scenes for us, they're doing quantum mechanics, but we, we can still calculate the same type of properties uh, with this. And so I'm just going to go on to the next tab using Orca. And I'm not interested in molecular energy here. What I'm interested in showing is the vibrational frequencies, but I just want to make sure that my molecule is at the best possible uh, geometry before we do the vibrational frequencies. And so I'm going to leave everything default, uh, optimize and vibrational frequencies. And um, I might make uh, this basis hit here. I'm going to make it small. Um, if you remember linear combination of atomic orbitals and how you make sigma and pi bonds, uh, the basis set is a similar idea where you use different functions per atom to build up your molecular orbitals. And so, what I'm trying to do is I'm trying to use the smallest number of functions per atom, the smallest number of S shapes and P shapes, etc., so that the uh, calculation will go fast. But what I'm trying to show here is this vibrational analysis.